everyone welcome back to my channel in this video we are going to have an overview of constraints in sql server we are going to see how we can add constraints and the different methods of adding constraints in t-sql so what are constraints constraints are used to specify rules for the data in a table they are predefined rules that you can enforce on either a single or multiple columns in a table now, these constraints can help you maintain the integrity, the reliability, and then the accuracy of the values you store in those columns. You can create constraints using the create table statements or the alter table statements in SQL Server. If you go with the alter table statements, then SQL Server will have to check the data in those existing columns before it can add the constraints. If you insert data in a column that has some constraints, SQL Server will have to validate those constraints before successfully adding the data to those columns. Now, if you add a data that violates those constraints, then SQL is going to abort the operation and then send you an error message. Okay, now for, the, for this demo, we are going to explore the following constraints. We are going to see um, how to use the primary key, uh, the foreign key, and then the unique key. And then we will look at some other keys, uh, sorry, other constraints such as the not null, the check, and then the default constraints. Now, before we start exploring uh, these uh, constraints in SQL Server, I just want to touch on the, what these uh, key constraints here means in SQL Server. Now, a primary key for a primary key, you can only have one of them in a particular table. So let's say you have a table, customer table. You can only have one primary key in that table. And the column that you specify as a primary key does not have to have null values. It always has to have some type of value, okay? Now, whenever you specify a column to have a primary key, it creates something called a unique clustered index. It is a type, is a special thing that SQL uses to kind of organize or sort the data in the table. We also have the, the unique key. The unique key is similar to the primary key. However, with the unique key, see I have here 999. If I'm right, I know that for the unique key, you can have more than one and you can have as much as 999 unique constraints in a table. However, it is not advisable to specify or all the 999 constraints in a particular table for just a unique key. For unique key, you can have one null value because that null value is unique, okay? You can have one null value in that table, in that column. Whenever you specify a column to also have a unique constraint, then you are adding something called a unique non-clustered index. That is also a special thing in SQL Server. However, I will touch on indexes in another video um, coming up so i wouldn't stress much on those indexes but i'm just um, more focused on the constraints so i'll just leave it as is and just tell you that when you specify a unique constraint you have something called a unique non clustered index on that column okay now we also have the foreign key now foreign key only points um, a column to another primary key in a different table so let's say we have a customer table that we are working with and then in the customer table, we have a product ID column. That product ID column in the customer table is referencing uh, the product ID in the product table, which is a primary key in that table. So you can never have foreign key when there is no primary key existing already. Okay, so that is what a foreign key is. Now we also have the, the not null and the check and then the default. I will demonstrate all of these in the demo. Now, before we start with the demo, like I said, we have different methods of adding the constraints. The method one that I would demonstrate is where we already have our tables created, and then we are going to use the alter table statements to add the constraints. And then I'll go ahead and demonstrate how you can create a table and the constraints at the same time as the method two. And then the third method is similar to the method two, where you create a table and the constraints at the same time, but this time around, you separate the create table statement from the create con the add constraint statement, but then you execute the command together. It may sound confusing, but once I demonstrate, you realize that it's very simple. So 
Um, without further ado, let's get into SQL Server Management Studio and see how we can add some constraints. For this demo, um, first of all, let's connect to SQL Server Management Studio and we are going to use our TestDB database, okay? Because we are about to add and alter some objects so we cannot use that venture or database. So when we go into our tables, we can really have um, a customer table and we have a product table. So these are perfect uh, examples for us to use for our demo today. We don't have any type of constraints in any of the columns. So we are about to see how we can use, because we already have the table already created, we are going to start with method one. And we go with the table is already created, hence we are going to use the altered table statements to add the constraints. So now click on new query and let's see how we can do this. So the first thing that we can probably do is to, so remember we are doing method one, right? Oops, am I typing? We are doing method one. Okay, the first one that we want to add is primary key, okay? Now to add primary key, let's add primary key to the customer ID column in the customer table. So this is how you go about it. You do the alter table, then you specify the name of the table. You can either drag and drop the table name here, or you can type it out. And then you say add constraint, constraint. And then the name of the constraints that you want to add. So for this, I want to add a primary key. So I'll start with PK on the customer table. So primary key and the customer. And the name of the, uh, and the type of constraint that I'm adding is a primary key constraint. And I'm adding the constraint on the customer ID column. Okay, so this is how you type it out, add in primary key. Okay, just to demonstrate, I had to uh, pause for a second and convert the column to null, and then I'm about to change it, all right? I just needed to demonstrate. Whenever you are adding a primary key, the column doesn't have to accept nulls. Now, the customer ID column, as it is, accept nulls, okay? Now, when I run this script, it's going to tell me that uh, you cannot add a primary key constraint because the column is a nullable column. Now, before we can add the primary key, we have to actually convert the customer ID to a not null column. So this is how you do that. You alter your table, and then the column that we are trying to alter is a customer ID column, and we are trying to set it to not null. So this is how you go about it, okay? Now that I have this run, if I refresh, I should see not null, and then if I execute this command, to add a primary key, you see that it would execute successfully. Now let's refresh the columns here. Now, after we did that, you see that we see a key at the customer ID. That is what that means. We have added a primary key and you see here it says key K. And if we go into the keys table, sorry, keys folder, you should see the name. We said we want to call the primary key PK customer, right? So we open this and we should see PK customer. So this is how we add primary key. Now, the next thing that we can do is probably add a unique key, okay, to one of the columns in the unique. So you start with the same alter table statement. And then over here, we just say add, instead of constraint, we say add unique, okay, add unique. And then the column that I want to add a unique is first name. Remember, this is not a good example because people can have same names. There could be multiple Angelinas in the database with different last names, right? So this is not a perfect example, but the, the records I have in here in this table doesn't give me any column to do that. So I'm just going to add a unique constraint on the first name. And remember, it allows one null, okay? So it's going to be successful, although the column says null, all right? And remember, I'm not specifying any name for this unique, all right? So just watch. Once I execute this command, Oh, my bad. I need to put it into parentheses. Okay, so now I'm going to execute this. Once it is executed successfully, let's refresh the table again. Sorry, and let's go to uh, columns. Now for the unique key, you don't see any key here on the first name. However, if you open the keys folder, you see that we have a UQ, that is unique key. And you see, because we didn't specify a name for it, it gave us some type of name with some numbers. So it is very useful for you to specify the name so that if you need to type it out sometime, you can type it out easily, all right? So this is how you specify unique keys in um, SQL Server. Now let's see how we can add foreign keys, foreign keys. Wow. 
boring keys. Now, before we can do that, we have to have had a primary key somewhere that we are referencing in another table. If I, if you remember my explanation of what foreign keys are, they are for referential integrity. So we have two tables. So I believe I should have a foreign key in one table referencing the primary key in another table. So what I want to do is that I, at first, I want to add the product ID to the customer table as a, a foreign key, right? So before I can do that, this is what I mean. So I'm going to alter the customer table and I'm going to add the product ID column to the customer table, which is uh, from this table here, product. So I'm going to run this here. And if I refresh the columns here, now I should have product ID in the customer. This is the ID that I want to set as a foreign key to reference this uh, key here, this uh, ID here in the product table. But remember, a, a primary key must exist before you can specify a foreign key. So now what I have to do is I have to change the product ID column. Remember, you cannot set primary key on the column that is null. So I have to alter the table and alter the column to say that set the product ID to not null column before adding the primary key. Okay. Now that I have done that, I want to add a primary key. The primary key that I want to add, I want to call the PK product, and I'm adding the primary key on the column product ID in this table. All right. So if you refresh this column now, we have the product ID not null. So addition of the primary key shouldn't be a problem. Perfect. So now refresh this columns here. Now we see the key. Now we go to the keys. We see the PK product. So now that we have a primary key in the product table, we can reference, we can make this product ID in the customer table as a foreign key referencing this primary key. Now this is how you do that. You go back to your alter table. Now we are about to add a foreign key to the customer table, right? So alter table customer. And then I would say that add constraint. I'm going to copy a few things first. Okay. <laughs> add constraint and I want to call it FK customer product because it's in my customer table referencing the product. This is what I want to call it. And I want to make this a foreign key. Foreign key. All right. Now the foreign key must be the product ID column. Okay. And then you have to add a few more things with the foreign key. You have to specify what it is referencing. So it references what? It references the product table, okay, and the product ID column from that table. And the product ID column from the product table. So we are saying the alter the customer table, um, add a foreign key called FK customer product. And the foreign key must be added to the product ID in the customer table, which references the product table, uh, the product ID column in the product table. All right. So once we execute this command here, successful. So refresh customer table. Sorry, refresh customer columns. So now we see here, then we see another key. Now this key is lighter. <laughs> so now that is the foreign key. We see we have FK. Now if we refresh the keys column, this is the name we had given the foreign key. Okay, so now that key is referencing the product uh, ID column in your uh, product table. All right. So this is how we we can do um, uh, the method one with altering the tables that already exist and adding keys or adding constraints. Okay. So let's see how we can do um, uh, method two. So remember, we said null, not null. They are all constraints. Uh, uh, I had uh, to change some columns to not null before adding the primary key. So we already looked at how to add a not null constraint to a uh, table. So let's move on quickly to method two. And the method two uh, is where we do, what did we say met method two was? Oh uh, yeah, you create create the table and constraints together at the same time. Okay, so because we already have the tables created, I'm going to attempt to um, use the same names, the same names, meaning customer table and product table, before I can drop uh, 
one table, I have to remove the constraints. So let's see. Let's say we want to drop a uh, product table, right? We want to say drop table. Drop table. And I want to drop product. You see what will happen soon. It failed because we have to drop the foreign key that is referencing the product ID before we can drop the product table. Okay. Once we specify a foreign key to reference a primary key, you have to drop the foreign key first before you can move on to dropping the entire table or the primary key in that column. So now we see how it, it is handled. So first of all, let's go into customer table. Uh, let me let me write some script quickly here. So I'm going to alter the table here, customer, not a product. Let me remove this, okay? And I'm going to say drop constraint, and I'm going to drop which constraint? The foreign key. Remember, the reason why we can't drop this table is that because of the foreign key. The foreign key name, we call it FK customer product. So let's drop that. What happened? Oh, because I put in. So let's select this, drop that. Perfect. We no more have. We no more have a foreign key in um, refresh table. Sorry, refresh table columns keys. We no more have a foreign key uh, referencing the product ID. Now we can successfully drop our product table. Perfect. So now if we go to our tables, go back to tables, refresh all. Now we realize we only have one table. Now before we can also drop uh, the the the. the the, the customer table, we don't have to specify anything like drop constraint on the on the unique key or the primary key before we drop it because we are not referencing anything. So a simple drop table, customer table should should do it. Okay. So let's see uh, how we can do that. We are about to drop the table because we are about to recreate them with a constraint. So it's a key. Perfect. So now all the tables are gone. We don't more have tables. Okay. So these were these some scripts to just show you how to, to go about removing the constraints before dropping tables. So now let's see how we can create the customer table with the constraint. Now I'm going to say create table and I want to call it customer. Remember the default schema is DBO, so I don't have to really specify it in the open parentheses. Um, sorry. The first column that I want is supposed to be called uh, customer ID, customer ID, and then I want the, uh, the ID to be an int column, and I want it to be a primary key column, okay, primary key. Then I go to my next column, and I want to add um, product ID, just like we did the, the foreign key. So product ID, and I want it to be an integer, and I want that key to be unique, okay. And then I want to go on to my first name, and I want that to be varpar. And remember, data types are not really uh, constraints, but they are somewhat constraints because if you specify characters 50 and they pass you, um, let's say 100, it will truncate the data and give you only 50, right? So it's some type of constraint. So we want this to be varpar, and then we want to specify here to be not null, all right? Now we've started specifying some of the uh, not no constraints. Now for the middle name, not everyone has a middle name. So I'm going to say that it's Varkar or Varchar, however you say it, I don't know. Wow, what did I type? Varkar. And I also want to specify that as 50, but this one can accept no, okay? Because I, I don't have a middle name. Probably a few people don't have it too. So last name is required. So it would not be null, okay? Last name is a required field. So var, car, and let me put that to be 100, and I'll say that is not null. Some way, somehow, you should have a first name or last name, or you shouldn't exist in my table, okay? And then I'm going to have a phone number. Phone number, I'm going to say var, car, var, car, uh, 50 or 20 and I'm saying that uh, phone number is not null. I need to be able to call everyone, right? It's not supposed to be null because I don't want it to be null. I want to pass um, default values to it because 
let's say somebody doesn't provide me the phone number. I want to say that pass a default. Default. And the default value that I want is 00 zero dash zero 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 dash zero 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 zero. Okay, if there is no phone number, this is what I want to see in the customer table. All right, so in this create table, we did the create table and the constraint at the same time. We added the primary key, the unique key, we added not null, we added default. All right, so let's see how we can create the table. Now remember, with this create table statement, we haven't specified the name for the primary key and the name for the unique key, so you see how to create it. So now we created the table, refresh that, go to columns, and go to keys. Now you see the names we have, very lengthy names, right? Now with this same method, you can specify the name of the keys you want to provide. So let's see how we can do that by dropping the table. Uh, we want to drop this table first. We want to specify the names for the keys, okay? So what we can do is we want to, sorry, drop table, not drop, drop table. And then we specify the table name, which is the customer table. So now we do not have any more tables in here, okay? So I'm going to copy the same script down here. Now for the primary key, to be able to specify the name, you have to just say constraint. Wow, constraint. What am I typing? Constraint. <laughs> and then uh, the name of the constraint, which is going to be PK customer. Okay, so this is how you do that. And for the unique, I'm going to say constraint. And I'm going to specify the name of the unique key. And I'm going to say UQ. UQ, um, what? First name. Our product. Let me call it customer product, cast prod. Okay, so I'm going to specify the PK, uh, the, the, the name of the unique key, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the default. All right, so the differences between this first create table statement and the second is that over here we didn't specify the name of the primary keys and the unique keys, now we are specifying them. So create table, perfect. Now refresh uh, your tables. Go to tables, now go to columns, you see the key, and go to keys. Now you see that we have specific names for the PKs and the unique keys in the table. Perfect. So um, we can go ahead and do the same for product, but it's not necessary because uh, let's see how we can see, uh, let's see how the default was. So let's try to insert um, data into the customer table, okay? insert um, into the customer table. And remember in the previous videos, I told you that if you want to insert values by specifying the columns that you want to insert into, it means you do not want to insert into all of the columns. We are about to skip the phone number. Remember, we want to see how the default works. If we don't pass a value, are we going to get this zero, zero? Let's see. So we want to pass values for the customer ID we want to pass values for the product ID. We want to pass a value for the first name. And we want to pass a value for the last name. Remember, middle name is not required. It's, it can be null, so I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to say values. And the values that I'm going to pass, are, I'm going to pass one for the customer ID and one for the product ID. And the first name is going to be my name. Well, and now, Angelina can have a, a F in it as well. <laughs> so from Paul and let's see, insert. You see, insert was successful. Now let's select star from customer table and see what we have inserted so far. So default is working and not null is also working. We said that pass a value to first name, do not pass anything to the middle name and it does it. Accept null. Now for the phone number, if I don't pass anything, please don't leave it blank or leave it null. Pass this 000 values in there. And it's working perfectly. All right, so this is how we work with the second method of adding, sorry, creating the table and the constraint at the same time. So now let's see the third method where we create a table and the constraint at the same time, but 
we separate the constraint and the create table statement. So what I would do is that I'll copy this create table command. Okay, so I'll copy this command and I'll say that this is an integer and this is a not null column and this is uh, going to be a not null column as well. Okay, and then bar phone number uh, default. Okay, and then I'm going to say that constraint. Let me be fast. Let me add constraint like this. You see, we made some spaces, and then we are adding the constraint to which column? The customer ID column that we are about to create. We want to make it a primary key column, and we want to call it PK customer. And then the product ID column that we are creating. Okay, we want to make a product ID column um, a foreign key that references a product table and then the product ID column in that table. But remember, I think we don't have a product product table anymore. So let's quickly create that. Mm, I will create a product table first before I can do this product and I have to make a primary key just to uh, let me give it a name um, constraint I'll call it pk product so run this now we have a primary key that this table can reference but before then I have to still drop the customer table okay because we're about to create it so drop the customer table so what we are saying is we are about to create a table, debut customer, with the customer ID, product ID, first name, last name, middle name, and phone number. We've separated the addition of the constraint at the bottom of the script, but we are about to execute them together. Remember the parentheses here. At first, we would end with the, the, the create table like this, uh, with the constraint in here. Now, before the parentheses ends, okay, before the parentheses ends, we made some spaces and we've added the constraint. So let's see how we can create this. Refresh our tables, uh, run this, fingers crossed. Perfect. All right, now let's refresh the tables. We should see customer. And now we have the customer table. We have the primary key, foreign key, and then we have the name of the keys, the customer, the product, customer product uh, keys as well. So. This is how you can add constraints. So we took a look at the primary key, the foreign key, we did the unique key, we did the not null, we did the default. And uh, well, I didn't discuss check constraints. Let me see how I can do check constraints quickly and let you know. So right now, the only thing that we have left is to add check constraints, okay? So now that we have, um, uh, our our product table. We can use a product table to do the check uh, constraint example. I'm going to say that for the product IDs that we are about to insert into this table, the value should be no more than 10. Okay. So to do that, we are going to go because we already have the table created. We are going to go with um, method two and say alter table. Um, let me copy something here. I don't want to drop a constraint I'm about to add. So I'm going to alter the table and I want the product table. Okay. And I'm going to add a constraint and I want to call the constraint uh, check C K product. Okay. This is what I want to call it. And then I'm going to say that do a check on what? open parenthesis on the product ID column and then the values should be less than 10. All right, this is all that I'm saying. On the product table, create a constraint called the check constraint. The check constraint is enforcing that the product values, the product ID values that we insert into the table should be, should be less than 10. So let's create this. Alter. Now, now let's refresh the product table. Now let's go to columns. You don't see anything, but when you go to constraints, now you see that we created a constraint called CK product. Okay, CK product. And that constraint is what is going to make sure that if we insert a record in the table and it's more than 10, it's going to fail. So as a matter of fact, let's do an insert into that table. 
And then we are going to say that for this table, um, add the product ID, add the product name, add the product number, um, and then the description. And maybe we don't need to add all of them because all of them, I think they accept null. Yeah, let me just remove these. So I would do this. I would just say that for the product, because we're about to test whether uh, we pass 11, what is going to happen. So we say values, and I'm going to pass 11, and I'm going to say product um, name is a bicycle. Bicycle. So let's try to insert. So you see that it says the insert statement conflicted with a check constraint. We cannot do this insert statement. The, uh, the, 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 the process has been terminated. All right. Now if we went with nine, sorry, nine, let's see what we get. Insert, perfect. You see that? So this is how, refresh, uh, refresh, refresh. So now we've added one record into our custom uh, product table and it didn't violate uh, the, the constraint we uh, put on the table. So it inserted the record successfully. So um, this brings us to the end of our SQL constraints uh, demo. I hope you find this uh, video useful and very informative. Um, thank you for watching.